And the governing New Patriotic Party is today rounding up its vetting ahead of the parliamentary primaries across the country on January 27th. So far, Interior Minister Ambrose Derry will go unopposed as Alex uh, uh, Mo, uh, wo, uh, who found uh, to contest him, was uh, disqualified by members of the vetting committees following petition uh, brought against him by the party's uh, constituency executives. Join News' uh, Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafik Salam has more in this report. Five persons at the close of nominations for the new Patriotic Party MPP primaries filed to contest in three constituencies in the upper West region. The National Democratic Congress, NDC, holds eight out of the 11 parliamentary seats in the region. The NDC's agenda for the 2024 polls is to add to its fold all the remaining three parliamentary seats of the MPP in the region. One of the seats is Nandom, currently being held by Interior Minister Ambrose Derry. He has for the fourth consecutive time Penciled his name for the Nandom MPP parliamentary primary. He has previously only a couple of times contested the party's primaries in the Dendoran Nandom constituency, where the latter was carved out from. Sway for constituency and polling station executives and party faithful traveled the 113 kilometers from Nandom to what to accompany him to the veteran room in a style reminiscent of a heavyweight boxer entering a boxing ring. So I think we need to, what, to support him to, what, to make sure that he's well retained. Half an hour later, Ambrose Derry was out and had this message for the people. I've gone through the vetting. He asked very important questions. I've answered them to the best of my ability. And I'm happy with the questions that I, uh, the answers that I gave. It is the, uh, the committee that will come out with his decision. I wouldn't take that, but for me, I am very satisfied with the vetting and I look forward to the outcome of the vetting here. And I believe that after that, I would then know the direction I go with the party in Nandom. He supports contender Alois Mo, who was expelled from the party for anti-party behavior accompanied by a little of over a dozen of his supporters had the opportunity to meet the veteran committee but was later disqualified. Secretary of the veteran committee, Dr. Dada Tanko, disclosed to the press why he was disqualified. Indicate, even the minister we presented to him, he did indicate that uh, even in 2008, because the, the constituency executive indicated that 2012, 2016, and 2020, he had campaigned against the, the parliamentary candidate. And he himself said that they should even add 2008. And that was also captured in the minutes. So which he didn't deny here. So we, we, we didn't need to go any, any further to be confirming or to be asking for any other evidence. Alex Mo, however, disagreed with the Beton Committee. I haven't suggested that I'll be using the courts, but clearly it's an option that is available to anybody who is dissatisfied. But for me, especially with my pedigree in the party, I know that you must exhaust all the channels internally. So you've shown your power, your might at war, just like you've done when the form picking came up. I will go to the appeals committee. For now, the Cecil East constituency will be the only constituency where primaries will be held. Incumbent member of parliament for the Cecil East constituency, Amir Chine Saku, is counting on his good works that he has done in the last three years, which will make him second time lucky to win the primary. There is a difference between theory and practicals. <laughs> this election is theory against practicals. I'm a practical politician who knows the terrain. And on the 27th of January, you will see the difference between theory and practicals. Thank you. Standing in between him and that victory is a 45-year-old lecturer at the University of Ghana, Dr. Joshua Zato Jebintia. 
now Sasala Institute now need a doctor. So Sasala Institute will choose another doctor, another astute uh, academic like me, Dr. Joshua Jabunteza too. If the two doctors, and my position is number two, think about it, it's prophetic, the gods of Tum and the gods of our land, the Tum we had have ordained it. Number two, we have two doctors standing on the bedside of Sasala East. 2025. Sister Lahi will be healed. Development will come. Progress will come because the two doctors will not, cannot fail Sister East and Madagana. Incumbent member of parliament for Lambusi, Yelvilodon Baligi, has no such worries as he's going on the polls. To look at the internal road network, we haven't done badly. We have indeed connected the communities. What is outstanding? Is one major road that should be start, which has started. In fact, the contractor has, has been to site, he's on site, he's, he started from Nandom heading towards Lambusi. I just made a passionate appeal to the panelists, and I know my expectations will even be exceeded. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam. Wow. Down south in the Ashanti region, over 120 aspirants were cleared by the vetting committee to contest after the vetting ended yesterday. 41 incumbent MPs will be contested on January 27 as uh, five go unopposed. My colleague Nana Bwache Yadom has a wrap of events in the Ashanti region. Today, the battle for 41 seats on the ticket of the new patriotic party begins as over 120 aspirants pass through the vetting committee. Some of the fierce contests will be happening at Bantama constituency, Asante Achem Kwadaso, and almost all 41 constituencies. For the aspirants who spoke to join news, they are optimistic of victory. The fiercest competition, I believe, was between myself and Honorable Kokofu. That was the the, 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 the fiercest as far as I'm concerned. This one for me is not a, it's a no match. When you go to the constituency, those who are voting, they see a big difference. Yes. Like a, a difference between a VIP bus and Pragya. Yes. That is the difference. Let me say, I am not going to be like I've already won. No, there, there is nothing like complacency in this game. Once there is a ballot, yes, I am going in full force as I did. And currently, you can see the constituency is united behind me. They would want me to continue with the work that I've started. And I'm sure you can see the delegates behind me. They are going to say what will happen on the 27th. And I know, inshallah, and by his grace, victory is assured. Expect what happened in 2020. A large victory. That is with hard work. Like my people know what I've done. And nothing will be shaking our victory. We are winning and we've already won. <laughs> well, well, the battle is the Lord. And I can tell you that count on the seventh is going to be another resounding victory for the Kwame Siyama and MP. Are you retaining your seat? Oh yes, very much so. Very optimistic. I can assure you that the legacy in Ashwan for the past 80 years is a match. You, you look very optimistic, but then your opponents are also super optimistic. Coming up against um, Vincent from Menu, how does it look like? The first time I contested with him was in 2015. He had 14 votes. He was last. I occupied the penultimate position. I had 78. The second time we contested in 2020, he was last. He had 48 votes. I had 172 votes and I won. And he's coming again for the third time. Wait till January 20, 20, January 27. And we saw it's going to happen. And we see that the Santi Achim South constituency needs a certain deliverer who would put the MPP in a certain position in the constituency and ensure that the votes of the MPP move up and so that the constituency does not become a threat or a constituency that the NDC can go after. And for us embarking on this journey, we have asked God because this sign that he has shown us today is clear that he's with us, he's on our side. Uh, I'm going to win hands down. You are so optimistic of victory. Very optimistic. The general election, I'm going to win because more than 80 to 90 percent. If I'm giving the ballot at the uh, 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 delegates conference. Well, it went very well. Um, I, I 
sorry to be just formality. Um, having gone through the process already, uh, had a very successful vetting, uh, and during the balloting, uh, I'm number two on the ballot, which signify unity, which signify uh, 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 improvement, and the people are craving that. I come back and continue with the projects that I was embarking on. Um, I'm tried and tested. I've proven to the constituents that I can deliver um, the job opportunities that I've given to the youth. The projects that I've brought to the constituency speaks for its itself. And um, the the clarion call of the constituents that I should come, I, sh I, I should come and and take care of the constituency. Now the vetting process is over. The big deal is on January 27th with 41 constituencies with incumbent MPs. Who then would become the fresh face we would see in Parliament? And would they even pass through 7 December 2024? For Joy News, my name is Nana Bwachi Dankwa Yadom Kumasim. Well, uh, let's head to the central region where some NPP supporters alleged uh, to be wearing Mevisa Kumsin's T-shirts have been beating uh, Cape uh, FM morning host uh, uh, included uh, also uh, have been waiting at the vetting grounds. Uh, Richard Kujonyako uh, has been monitoring the process uh, there for us and is joining us uh, with more. Uh, Richard, bring us up to speed with uh, what's happening there. Is that what has been happening for the past two days is that vetting um, started in the central region. In fact, two places, the regional coordinating council and the MPP regional headquarters. So it's been going on concurrently. So um, uh, what happened essentially today was that some supporters of the MPP were clad in Madam Mavis Hawakumsen's T-shirts. Uh, they are alleged to have beaten um, the host of the Cape FM on issue. And Cape FM is a radio station affiliated to Adum FM in the central region in Cape Coast. But all of them remain allegation. And in the last hour, Madam Mavis Hawakumsen has issued a release uh, distancing herself from the brutalities meted out to the young man. He says that she says that she is for peace and she's been preaching peace and there is no way she is going to endorse and sanction and act like that. And so she's calling on the authorities, the Ghana Journalist Association and all those who matter to go um, into this matter, investigate it thoroughly, and they will come out with the conclusion that she is innocent of the accusations that have been leveled against her. So she says that people that are pointing accusing fingers at her, uh, the story is untrue, and she is no way uh, very close to the action that took place. And so uh, her, um, she is really empathizing with the person that has been beaten in this case. And so that is what has been happening. Uh, have we had any word from the uh, you know, MP so far? Well, so um, the, the, the MP involved who has been accused is May, Madam Mavis Hawakumsen, and I just indicated that in the last hour, uh, she, she has issued a statement and distancing herself from that. But for the MPP in, in particular, the regional uh, communications office, they have not, they are yet to issue any um, release uh, as far as this incident is concerned. And let me also put this on record. Last four years, it wasn't on a post. We came for vetting like this. And at the end of the day, their performance was not good. And so that's why I went on a post. Uh, who knows? I, I could be disqualified. They could be disqualified. So for now, we, we don't know what will happen. The committee will send their report to, to the head office or wherever. They will have discussions. Then later we'll hear what will come out. So it's not concrete that people are contesting me or I'm not going on, on a post. Last time it was the same thing. We, we all came for vetting and I don't know I, I was the only person who, who was able to sail through. Let me put it that way. Yeah. So how was the process like? It was good. Being a city member of parliament, this is my third term and I'm seeking for the fourth term. I mean, I would say I know the grounds, I have the experience in every aspect. If it is human relation, I have it. Whatever it takes to, to make one a politician, I have it. 
I'm not underrating my content, but what I'm saying is that when you put all of us on a platform, you realize that our Kumsi is a different product altogether. So many, so, so, so many. I've done so much for Awutu Senior East. That's my third term, as I said, and I'm going for my fourth term. I've done a lot. We talk about education. I have my handwriting there. He talk about health. I have my handwriting there. He talk about security. I have my handwriting there. But currently, when you talk about security, you see, you come to Kaswa, you see a pickup that my name is boldly written on it. Now, when you go to Adam Nana, there is a story building that is being put up there single-handedly. Not from my common fund, from my own pocket. I'm putting up a police regional headquarters for Central East Regional Quarters. There are a lot. When it comes to road, you can see the roads that are being constructed in Kaswa. When we talk about water, I mean, it those that don't have the national water grid, I'm giving them boreholes, mechanized ones, so they can use till we get them the national one. When we talk about street lights in Kaswa, I mean, everywhere you see street lights, and it is me who has, who has fixed it there. So there are a lot. We talk about, I mean, helping people, work, I mean, employment, a whole lot. But you see, the issue is Kaswa is like the ocean. Kaswa is like the sea. When it rains in it, I mean, you don't see, you don't realize. You don't realize it. You don't realize because whether it's, it's much or less, it doesn't flow up. The way it is, the way it is, it is, it is always. And so whatever we are doing in Kaswa, we are, we are we are doing so much, but people are not seeing it. We look at the population in Kaswa, we have over 500,000 people. And so it's like a whole region, even more than a region. I remember some time ago when ministers of fisheries were here and she shall, this country, the minister came and asked me how many people are in my constituency and I said, well, there are about 500,000. He asked me about my popular, uh, voter population, I said over 100 and. 54,000. He said they are even more than his country, the total number of Shisha. And so you can imagine the number of people in Aotu Senior is. We've done a lot and we still have a lot to do. That is what I'm saying. This is Dr. Robert Akon, an aspirant for Upper Denta East constituency. The reason for me to contest is that the people of Upper Denta want somebody who can win the seat for the MPP party. There is disunity in the party, and they need a leader who is a unifier, who can bring everybody on board, both the young and the old, to improve on our fortunes. We know that from 2016 to 2020, the fortunes of the MPP has been dwindling. It's coming down significantly. And it's evident by the current results that came in the assembly election. The assembly election, the new patriotic party used to have 28 members. The NDC had only eight members. The recent one, the NDC appreciated to 13, and the MPP has 16. And even the 16 that we have, it took a lot of effort for them to come. As you all are aware, Asin Central constituency for good eight years was held by the NDC. Thanks to the God sent Honorable Kennedy on any edge upon, he was actually able to consolidate the seat for us for good 23, getting to 24 years now. It is therefore incumbent on the next parliamentary candidate or the parliamentarian to ensure that that consolidation that has been done by Honorable Kennedy Japan does not deteriorate in any way. It was a very friendly atmosphere. Um, I have been there before. This is not the first time I'm uh, going through this. Three years ago, I contested Honorable Kennedy Japan for this same position. Uh, fortunately, uh, I think I fell short at this level and I was disqualified. So this is not the first time um, I have uh, attended such a, a vetting. Uh, but the atmosphere was friendly. Um, I think I am a known uh, person uh, now. They all appreciate what I have done for the community and for Ascent Central. And so I don't think that was the question that really disqualified me last time. Is uh, a shadow of doubt. There's no shadow of doubt that I have been able to accomplish all that uh, by way of uh, uh, not being able to nurture the constituency prior to my uh, uh, engaging in the election uh, three years ago. My name is Joseph Ajay Benin. 
I've seen Central Parliamentary candidate um, aspirant. I'm just done with the vetting and the balloting. And I will, I will wish everybody to stay calm. We are going to work hard. We are involving the youth. We are youth-centered. And we'll make sure that everything that we have said that we will we'll do, we will do more. The spiritual side and the physical side. By God's grace, I have done the spiritual side, the, the, the physical side. I've left the spirituality for God. But I am telling you on the spiritual, the, the, the physical side, nothing is restraining me from winning these elections because of the work that has been done. Remember that election is a process. It is not an end. The 27th is an event. We'll just go and endorse it. But it's a process. And from 2021, since I won and became MP, I have worked towards this day. And that is what is enduring me the victory come 27th. Yes, in, that's why in the area of health, for example, almost all my electoral areas have cheap compounds. And when you go to my two big cities, Jokwa and Hemai, personally, personally, I'm, I'm telling you on authority, personally, and by grace, I've been able to build extra facilities for them. And so my people are happy. In the area of education, uh, you know, maybe you have been one secondary school in your area that doesn't even have a bus. Because of their strong MP, both schools have buses. I'm saying that I didn't buy the bus myself, but I facilitated for them to get the bus. But the buses were limited and the schools were many. So how do you get them? By grace, they have it. Apart from that, I have scholarship schemes in some of my electoral areas. And I'm doing all in the area of agriculture, particularly also in the area of employment. Over a thousand people have had jobs. Thankful to His Excellency the President who put me in the employment ministry. So a lot of things passing by me, they translate into people's employment opportunities within my constituency. And these are what the delegates are watching. Above all, is the humility I carry and the fact that they access me 24-7. And this is what is endearing me victory in 20, on the 27th, come 27, 2024. So these are the things that I bring to come winning as a solid candidate to go and win hands down in 2024, December 7th. Richard, anything else happening in the central region? Well, so um, the vetting is still ongoing. And in fact, the national vice chair of the MPP, um, Rita Talata Asobaye, who has been chairing one of the committees, is indicating and prevailing on the aspirant to speak uh, with the supporters because some of them are speculating that um, a lot of them would be disqualified. In fact, she has been saying that she has no power to disqualify anybody, but it is the people, the work they have done, and whether they are in good standing with the political party, and that would mean or that will ensure whether they are disqualified or not disqualified. But apart from that, all the people that came before them, they are very good, and so they should be rest assured. But if there is anything, by Monday, they would see whoever is um, is qualified or not qualified to contest the, 27, uh, the January 27 election. Uh, Richard Kujunyaku in the central uh, region for us. Uh, in the northern parts uh, of the country, there's uh, quite a lot happening there. Uh, as uh, we understand uh, that uh, the spokesperson for Alaji Ahmed Nuhu Zarok says that the team is yet to receive some feedback from the voting committee after yesterday's uh, uh, undecided decision. Alaji Ahmed uh, Zarok is seeking to unseat uh, Dominic Nitu in the Bimbila area um, to represent that constituency on the ticket of the New Patriotic Party. But his attempt uh, has been met with some challenges. Regional correspondent Martina Bugri is joining us uh, with more. Uh, Martina, we know what that led to. Uh, the uh, clashes uh, witnessed in the last few days. Uh, but as we speak now, uh, do we know if, uh, you know, the committee uh, has finally communicated to Alaji uh, uh, and his team? First, um, I say that they haven't received any confirmation yet. 
but they are also planning on meeting. He says after the, the afternoon prayers, the two o'clock prayers, they would meet to decide their next line of action if by close of day they don't get any feedback from the committee. But I must say that the northern region and um, 14 people were vested, 13 have sailed through, and it's only Elijah Farouk, um, Zaruk, who is waiting for his confirmation. Mm. The vetting likely went on successfully, except for some few uh, near clashes uh, between supporters of uh, Elijah Farouk, Ali Mahama, and Abibata Mahama Shani. Um, the Yendi constituency, when the two candidates got in, I mean, their supporters traded a few insults, but the MP um, on his hand tried to calm his supporters, while Asya uh, Bibata also calmed her supporters. And so they were able to sail through without any clash. Similar thing happened between uh, Alaji Zaruk supporters and um, Dominic Nito will support us. They, were, they also traded some few insults amongst themselves. But largely, it was peaceful and right. everything uh, is settled uh, now. Uh, in it, you know, uh, what do we know about the presence of uh, any of the national executives or otherwise? Are they equally concerned about what's happening there and what's the level in, of, of intervention uh, coming through from the national um, headquarters of the NPP on this matter? Now, earlier on, when we spoke to uh, Elijah Zairus, the uh, spokesperson, he says that um, they were assured by the national uh, secretary that there won't be issues, it will be fairly handled, but with new, this new development, it means that they may have to meet with them again to dialogue to see what they can resolve um, this issue that's hanging currently. I see. Um, how about the members of the party in the constituency? What's their utmost concern now, uh, looking at the fact that the process is being delayed simply because um, you know, the, the party needs to communicate to all the aspirants involved? Now, um, I'm told yesterday in the evening, before um, work got home, they had told them that um, he, had, he was, he was caught disqualified. That, that was the information that had gone. And the young men in the constituency were marching up to begin routing again. So elders had to come in to plead with them. So I was asking him, for how long will they be able to sustain them, keep them at bay, and not allowing them onto the street? Because these are young men who are very vibrant and can move in and out at any time. He says that they will do their best, but it will also depend on how much proactive the party is that will help them and maintain peace in the area. All right, uh, Martina Bugri is in the northern region for us, <coughs> monitoring uh, the New Patriotic Party's uh, parliamentary voting. Let's come to the Greater Accra region, uh, where the regional secretary of the party, Odana Parker uh, France, has addressed uh, some concerns raised by MP for Wijagba, Tina Meng said that she uh, wanted to, uh, of course, wanted her opponent to be disqualified because he had not lived in the constituency uh, for some number of years. Here's the, the reaction from the party. Two of the vetting of MPP's parliamentary candidate hopefuls in the Greater Accra region has concluded, with some of the biggest names in the party being vetted today. MP for Wajak Bawe, Tina Mensah says she petitioned the party to disqualify her opponent because he did not meet certain requirements of the party. When you insist, it will be like you are scared of the, the vote. But I just want to prove a point to tell the people that we have a constitution. We say, we stipulate certain things. So that is why I appealed, I, I, I petitioned. But they beg that where the party is, they don't want a situation that when they disqualify somebody, it will be some sort of acrimony. There will be a sort of a, a, a scared of a, 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 a contest or something. So I just let it go. I said I need an apology from me, and then he apologized. Communications Minister Ursula Wusu says the numerous MPP MPs who will not be returning to Parliament will be sorely missed. One person whose input will be sorely missed in the next Parliament is Osei Chemen Sambuns. I would have wished that he would have stayed on because both sides of the House recognize the immense contribution that he's made to the growth of our democracy. But there comes a time in everybody's life when we move on to the next stage in, in, our, in our personal development. So I wish all of my, my, my colleagues who won't be returning to the house because they've decided 
not to all the best. Damboche will be missed. Uh, Atacha will be missed. Jogate will be missed. Um, Joe Weiss will be missed. I mean, the list is endless because they all and all the others have contributed significantly to the strengthening of our side of the house and, and, and um, parliamentary practice. Greater Accra Regional Minister Henry Cortes says his opponents are no match for him. The MPP believes in democracy. The ideologies that help to shape and form the political party called NPP thrives on democracy. And so everybody is allowed to express his views, his opinion, and also get involved in an election. After all, the president, Nana Adodan Kwasukwago, went through contests. Unlike yesterday, there were no disqualifications whatsoever. My name is Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. And thanks for staying with us here on the Pulse on the Join News channel. Uh, we'll return shortly, but join the transformative experience at the convention on uh, January 7th at the Independence Square with a star-studded panel including the African leaders Julius Malema, Pielo Lumumba and Dr. Eric Khan as well as Peter Obi at this event uh, which unites some 30,000 minds for empowerment and inspiration. Be a part of history celebrating a powerful convergence of uh, cultures with giveaways and exclusive items. So don't miss the day of unity and empowerment for free tickets, all you need to do. Uh, and to get more information on this is to visit the newafricafoundation.org. You can equally call uh, 0532 3890324 uh, more information and see you there as well as this convention happens. We'll be back. <laughs>